Hello everyone, my name is Harold Halfdane and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. In this series, we'll be using archaeology to talk about Minecraft, building various monuments or archaeological or historical structures, and we'll be talking about archaeological concepts and principles. I'm a former archaeologist who likes to play Minecraft and I'm excited to merge the two, learn a bit, and have some fun. Hopefully you will as well. In this episode, we'll be talking about Irish ring forts, which are also known as Roth. These date to around 600 to around 900 to 1000 AD. They were likely still in use after that, and earlier versions may date to the Bronze Age. They are the most numerous archaeological monuments found in Ireland, with over 40,000 discovered. However, there may be as many as 50 to 60,000 at one point, as some have simply been lost to time due to erosion or being plowed over by farmers for the past 1,000 years. Their density is such that typically standing at one ring fort, you'd be able to view anywhere from three to ten other ring forts on the landscape. If we head over to the chalkboard, you can see I built out not just one but two different types of ring fort. I did this to give a couple of examples of the different types of ring forts and highlight their different features. I built one example of the average ring fort in size and type. The other ring fort was largely based on the one that was excavated at Deer Park Farms near Gladarm in the Atrium Glens in Northern Ireland. I also took some aspects of the ring fort at Castle Balfour de Mesne in Fermanagh, Northern Ireland. As you can see from the different diagrams of a side view of the two ring forts, the average ring fort on the right which matches 84% of known and identified ring fort examples, is what is called a univallet ring fort. That's just a fancy way to say it only has one bank. It also has a single fossi. A fossi is just a fancy way of saying a ditch. So a typical ring fort will have one bank of around 2 meters in height and one ditch which encloses a circular interior. That interior is on average 20 to 44 meters and a total diameter which includes the outer bank and ditch of around 30 meters to 60 meters. Only 3% of ring forts lack a ditch. In the second example that is largely based on the ring fort at Deer Park Farms, you can see that from the side view diagram that I have built it as a bivalent platform ring fort. As you may have guessed, bivalent ring forts are one that has two banks and in this example has a single ditch that's located between the two banks as it is on the ring fort at Castle Balfour de Mesne. A platform ring fort otherwise known as a raised ring fort like is seen at Deer Park Farms has a raised interior where the central area is higher than the surrounding landscape. With that out of the way let's jump into the time lapse and we can talk more about ring forts while you watch me build them. I picked ring forts for this episode not just because I find them fascinating, but because I think they're a great structure that integrates well into Minecraft, specifically as a great starter base. When you're starting out in a new Minecraft world or exploring a brand new area and want to throw up a cheap and fairly quick base that will offer some protection from mobs, a ring fort fits the bill. Just as what occurred historically, you can dig a simple 1 to 2 meter ditch, or in this case 1 to 2 blocks deep, that can become the material for your bank. While the historic Irish didn't need to worry so much about zombies, skeletons, or creepers, they had their own reasons to build ring forts which provided them two different kinds of protection. While the minimal fortification might not have protected against a determined attacker and certainly wouldn't have helped in any form of siege, it did help protect the, a farmer's property, specifically their cattle and livestock from cattle raids. Generally speaking, the individuals who lived in ring forts were simply farmers and their ring fort acted as their homestead. In Ireland, during the Iron Age and early medieval periods, cattle raiding was a frequent issue and is a topic in a number of Irish myths. There's some debate about how good ring forts were as a fortification, as all but five examples lack a palisade. A palisade, in other words, is a wooden stockade surrounding the ring fort on its banks. It's possible that ring forts had more of a stake wall or fence surrounding the bank. A simple stake wall, however, which is usually one to two meters high, wouldn't have helped much to keep out raiders, even if the ring fort had one. The second way ring forts protected the farmstead was from the weather. 
Having a bank and outer ditch helped drain water out of the farmstead, and the bank acted as a shield from the wind. Irish winds normally come from the southwest, and the colder winds come from the north. Having a bank helped act as a windscreen, keeping the farmer warmer and drier. They also faced their entrances and gates toward the east or southeast, which optimized available sunlight into the interior of the ring fort. In this ring fort, you will see that there are no buildings and you can just see some cows and sheep. This is because some ring forts were merely used to pen livestock and keep them from trampling your crops and to protect them as described before from cattle raiders and inclement weather. Cattle were kept largely for dairy and cheese and sheep were kept largely for wool as opposed to primarily for beef or mutton, though they were used for food as well. Pigs were kept, although usually it was in the same ring fort as contained the houses as pigs were used exclusively for food. At Deer Park Farms, there was an average of around 20 animals with a ratio of 45% being cattle, 31% being pigs, and 22% being sheep. Speaking of Deer Park Farms, you can see I mocked up this ring fort with two banks and a central ditch as I previously mentioned. This indicates that it would have been owned by a higher class individual who had, was more upper middle class and higher status than a typical farmer. Irish legal tracts talk about various individuals and what they're allowed to own, how they should dress, how big their ring fort should be, how many head of cattle they're able to possess. Interestingly, the artifacts, tools, and amount of livestock found at the excavation at Deer Park Farms were in line with what the Irish legal tracts said who should be expected from someone of the status of someone living in that type and size of ring fort. The excavations also showed that there was a number of phases to the ring fort at Deer Park Farms. There was an earlier phase that was not raised and had a single ditch seemingly without a bank. This led to a later phase where the interior was raised to create a platform ring fort and the entryway was adjusted to accommodate those changes. Additionally, two souterrains were added at that time. If you wanna know more about souterrains, please check out episode one of this series. So why create a platform ring fort? Good question. First, let's talk about the downsides. It's theorized that having a platform ring fort has some disadvantages, such as being more prominent on the landscape and thus easier to spot, so more of a target for cattle raids. Also, due to it being higher above the surrounding landscape, it was less protected from the wind than a more typical ring fort design. Additionally, and I can vouch for this one myself, having built both a platform ring fort and a non-platform ring fort, Building a platform ring fort is a lot more work and you would have to move a lot more dirt. So why do they do it? Well, simple. It was necessary to create a platform ring fort to raise the ring fort above the water table and stop flooding issues. In fact, it was due to the lower levels being so waterlogged that the excavation proved so much of a boon to the archeologists as the water preserved many artifacts that would have been destroyed otherwise. While the ring fort's banks was often simply the backfill dirt from the creation of the outer ditch, the banks show signs of revenement, i.e. a retaining wall or facing of masonry or other material to help support the bank and keep it from eroding. That's why instead of just dirt and moss, I intersperse some mossy cobblestone, some stone buttons to replicate the retaining wall peeking through the greenery. There's a couple things to point out about this ring fort. First is that you notice the entrance is facing a different direction than the first ring fort. I know what you're thinking, half Dan. You said the entrances faced east or southeast. Did you just screw up and the first ring fort, you were too lazy to change it? Well, no, actually I did that on purpose. When a site has more than one ring fort close by, often the smaller of the two ring forts entrances faces the larger ring fort. So in this case, I faced our animal pen ring fort north towards the Deer Park Farm ring fort and faced the entrance and faced that entrance to the east. The next thing to notice is that due to the interior platform being raised, the entrance slopes upward. So it's unusually 
protrudes into the interior of the ring fort a bit. So that is how ring how Deer Park Farms actually is, although that's atypical of a standard even platform ring fort. Let's take a closer look at the structures inside the Deer Park Farms ring fort. You can see the entryway slopes upwards. The pigs were kept inside the central ring fort where the houses were. You can see I mocked up a little pig pen here. We could tell that there was pigs on site in this ring fort uh, because of the hog lice found on site. The central roundhouse, whose walls would have been made of wattle and daub, so wattle and daub is uh, a latticework of long straight sticks interwoven and then smeared with mud and dung and then whitewashed to help with the waterproofing. Uh, it would have had a thatched roof uh, to allow water to shed off and then allow for easy and cheap maintenance using nearby materials. The roundhouse is faced east towards the entrance, which was typical as its uh, location, uh, which is at the center of the ring fort. So typically uh, you'd find the roundhouses in the center of the ring fort. At Deer Park Farms, the the house is really close uh, to the to the entrance, but both the entrance and the uh, to the ring fort, as well as the entrance to the the central roundhouse, faced east. So if we can head inside, you can say it has a central hearth uh, with with the living areas around, so sleeping quarters and uh, and living quarters around uh, in the thatched roof, um, and the smoke would just go right out through the thatch. Uh, usually the uh, the entrances were really low down. You'd have to kind of crouch to go in, usually not kind of grand entrances. Uh, and the thatch would come down fairly low uh, with the uh, with the ring forts uh, with, not with the ring forts with the uh, with the roundhouses. Uh, the other uh, oh, I should say before we go to the other house, I should say that the uh, the central house here is seven to nine meters in diameter. Um, also what's really interesting about it is double walled. And so the, the area between the walls was stuffed with grass and other items, which acted as a form of insulation. So that was, uh, that's pretty cool uh, to keep, keep everyone warm and, and, uh, and, and extra dry. So the, the last building I mocked up here is, is actually highly unusual, um, which was at, at, um, at Deer Park Farms. And that's because it was a figure eight pattern. So figure eight, a little bit hard to mock up in Minecraft, but you can see that uh, its entrance faced east. Oh, I missed a block there. Um, its entrance faced east, uh, just like the 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 uh, the central roundhouse. But um, you can see that it was it was kind of one circular, smaller roundhouse, kind of affixed to another circular roundhouse, um, and that's how it made the the central figure eight. Uh, this also was double walled um, as the central figure eight. Um, a little different uh, between the excavations and my mock-up. Uh, in the excavations, it showed that uh, both uh, areas of the figure eight had a central a hearth. I, I mocked it up in the back here simply because in in uh, in Minecraft it was it was really just to to you you'd burn yourself even just trying to walk in. Um, it would just be. Uh, it would, it would look ugly inside. It's, it's too small. So a uh, little artistic license there. So at the, uh, at the beginning of the episode, um, you know, I mentioned that ring forts were used right up until around 1000 AD in, into the Norman era. Uh, during those later habitation phases, more towards the, the Rome, the, 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 not the no Roman, the Norman era, um, you can see that uh, the later habitation phases, some ring forts shifted away from having a centrally placed roundhouse, and uh, you see them being torn down completely. And in that same uh, layer of occupation, instead, uh, it was replaced with rectangular house located kind of on the side. I, I didn't mock that up here uh, because uh, that I wanted to stay more true to what Deer Park Farms ring fort looked like, but. Um, but yeah, it would abut the inside of the bank instead of being uh, in the in the uh, central uh, central area. And then 
also it was during that era that many more Sioux trains were built in conjunction with that regular uh, the rectangular shaped house if you want to learn more about the Irish ring fort I highly recommend you read a book by Matthew Stout named the Irish ring fort it's a pretty easy read about 125 pages so totally accessible well, I hope you liked our dive into Irish ring forts and enjoyed today's episode, and maybe you're even inspired to build something like this in your own Minecraft world. Please make sure you leave a comment below if you have any feedback or you liked the video. Um, like, subscribe, you know the drill. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next episode.